Today I'll show you how to make a super delicious honey oat sourdough bread. This may be a new daily driver. Hi, I'm Soon and I'm a food geek. So honey oat is a classic American bread. The original is soft, somewhat buttery and usually baked in a sandwich pan. And I will show you how to make that one. But I will also show you a version that has the classic shape of sourdough bread, but more the taste of honey oat. Not quite as sweet and buttery though, but you can always add butter later on. The difference between this type of bread and oatmeal bread is that you don't cook the oats in a honey oat bread. They're mixed in uncooked, which gives the bread a unique taste and mouthfeel. The oat taste is front and center, and it feels somewhat whole grainy, like eating oatmeal with milk. I'm not sure if that's only a Danish thing, but that's what I eat every morning. If you're new to this channel, I bake a lot of sourdough bread and I make delicious food from all over the world. If you want to see more of this content, please join me by subscribing and ringing the bell so you won't miss any future videos. The sourdough bread version is made with 90% bread flour and 10% rolled oats. The inoculation is just above 20% and the hydration is around 80%. Later I'll give you the amounts of water to hydrate the bread differently depending on your bread flour. The sandwich version of this bread is made with 90% all-purpose flour and 10% rolled oats. The amount of honey, salt and sourdough starter are the same, 6, 2 and 20% respectively. The bread also features 10% butter and 20% whole milk, which gives a softer and more luxurious bread. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider joining my Patreon. You can also buy some merch or use the super thanks or use the links in the description for tools and ingredients. Those were the words. These are the recipes. There's a link in the description to the recipe on my website. I'll show you each recipe separately if you want to work on one of these loaves. First, the sandwich bread recipe. Pour 50 grams of melted butter into 200 grams of water. Add 30 grams of honey. Mix until it's dissolved. To a medium bowl add 450 grams of all-purpose flour, 50 grams of rolled oats, 10 grams of salt. Mix until everything is evenly distributed. Then add the liquid mixture, 100 grams of whole milk, 100 grams of sourdough starter fed and grown to its peak. Then mix the dough until everything is mixed in properly. Then put the dough in a bulking container. Mark where the top of the dough is and where it will have grown 25%. Put it somewhere warm to ferment. When it's grown, take it out and shape it into a light bowl. Let it rest on the counter for 20 minutes. Then stretch the dough into a rectangle. Fold in the sides. And roll it tightly. Make sure you spray or grease your tin. I'm using a small Pullman loaf pan. Then spray the top of the loaf with water and roll it in rolled oats. Put the loaf in the pan, oat covered side up. Then cover it and put it for the final proof. You're aiming for 50 to 75% growth. This is how mine looked after the proof. When the dough is almost ready, heat your oven to 220 degrees Celsius, 425 degrees Fahrenheit. When the dough is ready, put it in the oven and bake for 35 minutes. Then take off the top of the pan and lower the temperature to 190 degrees Celsius, 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Then bake until a probe thermometer registers 99 degrees Celsius, 210 degrees Fahrenheit. It took about 15 minutes in my oven. And take out the bread, put it on a wire rack, 
and remove it from the pan. Leave it to cool completely. I'm on a seafood diet. I see food and I eat it. All right, time for the sourdough bread version. Pour 20 grams of honey into 250 grams of water. Mix it until the honey is dissolved. To a medium bowl add 300 grams of bread flour, 30 grams of rolled oats, 7 grams of salt. Mix it until everything is mixed together. Then add 70 grams of sourdough starter fed and grown to its peak. The water mixture. Mix it until it's entirely cohesive. Then put it in a bulking container. Mark where the top of the dough is and where it will have grown 25%. Then put the dough somewhere warm. Once it's grown, remove the dough from the container and pre-shape it into a light ball. Leave it on the counter for 20 minutes. Then shape it into a batard. Pull the dough out into a rectangle. Fold the bottom up a third. Fold the sides in towards the middle. Fold the top down and tuck it in the sides. Then roll it tightly. Cover the rolls on the ends. and spray the top and roll it in rolled oats. Put it in a banneton, oat covered side downwards. Stitch the back. And put it in the fridge for at least eight hours, but up to 48 hours. When you're ready to bake, heat your oven for 30 minutes to 230 degrees Celsius, 450 degrees Fahrenheit, with a Dutch oven inside. When the oven's hot, take the loaf out of the fridge. Dust it with rice flour to help it easily slide off the peel. Flip it onto the peel. Score the loaf. Put it into the Dutch oven and bake it for 25 minutes. Then take off the lid and let it brown for 25 minutes more. Take it out and put it on a wire rack. Let it cool completely. If your sandwich bread is cooled down, put it into a Ziploc bag to help it stay soft. All right, time to look at these loaves in all their glory. Wow, this is my new favorite bread. Don't they just look delicious? They share traits, but are also very opposite in ways. It's day and night, texture-wise. The sourdough bread's crust is super crunchy and the crumb is chewy, like you'd expect. The crust of the sandwich bread is soft and pliable and the crumb is also very soft. The chew in both loaves are heartier than in regular sourdough and sandwich bread, but that's what you want from honey oat bread. 
Taste-wise, they're very close. For some reason, the sandwich bread appears to be a little sweeter, but I think the texture difference fools your senses. The taste of both loaves is excellent. The oat taste makes for a delicious addition to the taste of regular wheat and is entirely in the front since both bread flour and all-purpose flour are not very flavorful because of the lack of whole grain components. You should try and make either of these loaves. They're fantastic and I think you may change what you're baking regularly. I hope you learned something today. See you next time.